Welcome to Mount and Blade Warband. Um, this is going to be a new LP. I've already done a test video. Um, I've altered a little bit of the settings. I was getting just a little bit of lag in the battle, so let me just go to that. Um, turn the music down because it was loud. Uh, sound volume is... Nah, it's alright. Uh, video options. I per turned everything down so I can get a lot more performance. Um, hopefully it doesn't look too bad. I haven't tested this yet. Uh, damage to player is going to be normal. Damage to friends is going to be normal. Combat AI is going to be, you know, average. Battle size is going to be large. Campaign AI is going to be average. Combat speed is going to be normal. Um, so basically, the difficulty of the game is going to be uh, all the same damage that would be done to troops is going to be done to me. So it's going to be fair. And by fair, I mean it's going to be incredibly difficult. Because most people play normal as like a fourth damage or half to friends, so let's start a new game. It's gonna launch a little bit, and then it's gonna ask us a few questions that is gonna generate our character. So blah blah blah. Uh, male or female? I'm gonna be a male because female. Uh, it's a lot harder for a female. Uh, your father was. Uh, I'm gonna go for an intelligent and charismatic character. So I'm gonna go with. Um, this will just grant you right to rule and give you a little bit of charisma. Merchant ship will give you intelligence and mercantile, so I'm going to go with that. Um, in your youth, you have very idle time as your father. Uh, I'm going to be put you in the care of a successful merchant. Uh, after what seemed like a turn of your life changed, you're given the opportunity to become a scholar at the university. And as it fates have had it, everything in the world has changed. You came to Pindor because of Wanderlust. Come to adventure. Now, I need to pick a banner. Let's pick a cool one. This is Prophecy of Pendor, by the way. It's got a ton of banners and a ton of different um, units and everything. So it's got quite a bit more than native, which is the normal amount. And as you can see, the standard ones are lower resolution than the newer ones. Have. Is this a Dark Angels banner? I think it's a Dark Angels from Warhammer. Uh, but this also shows up in your troop shields, so you have to kind of pick something that also looks cool on a shield. I actually kind of like that one, Punisher Skull. Uh, let's go with this one. This one I haven't used this one before. Now there's two choices: like a realistic, no quitting without saving, meaning if I go if something goes bad in a battle, I can't just exit out and reload. Now I'm gonna go with realistic because this is gonna be a hardcore playthrough, and if I die. If I get captured, if you know all my get, troops get wiped out and I lose everything, then that's what happens, and I have to build back up. So I'm gonna do realistic. Yeah, blah blah blah. Okay, so you've got attributes. Since I put all that stuff into mercantile and things, I got intelligence and charisma, and a little bit of agility and strength. Like six, I think, is the base it can be. So the questions really just added to those. Uh, your health is based off of your strength. I think it's 35 plus whatever points you have in strength. See, if I put one point in strength, it goes to 42. And then plus you got iron flesh. Every point you put in iron flesh, you get two points into hit points. Start off with a little bit of experience, 600 by the next level. It's difficult to get to whenever you're um, just fighting bandits because they'll occasionally, you'll run into like some mounted people and then you just get destroyed. So I'm going to be getting a lot of my experience from um, tournaments and, and practicing in the arena. So let's take a look at my, uh, I've got four points to put into my attributes. Now for every three points in an attribute, you can add one more point to a rel related skill. So for example, intelligence is 10, uh, tactics is a level 10, or is an, based off of intelligence, it's level 2. I can only go to 3, but if I put two points into intelligence, I can put 4. So that's how the skills work, and it gives strength, dexterity, or it's strength, agility, intelligence, charisma is down here. And there's two types of skills. There are personal skills, like if you see in the top right, it says personal skill. And then there's party skills, like uh, looting. It's a party skill. Now, personal skills, it takes the best out of your points and then applies that to your character. For party skills, if someone has a better stat in a party ability, like for example, if I had someone in my party that had three in looting, his three in looting would r override my two. So he, he would have 30%. It wouldn't be 50% bonus because I have two and he has three. It would just be 30%. So you don't want to have overlapping st um, stats in your companions. Um, I have 10 skill points because I have 10 intelligence. For every point in intelligence you add, you get another skill point plus however many you get per level. 
Over here is proficiencies. Um, basic proficiencies, since I'm not a very combat oriented character, I don't have good proficiencies. If I was a knight or a warrior or something, I would have more points. Um, these are just, you get those by leveling up uh, and um, you get points by leveling up and whenever you use your uh, combat abilities, like if I was using a one-handed weapon, um, the damage that I do gives me um, more skill points. Also with archery and crossbows and throwing, if you do harder shots, like if you hit someone in the face or hit someone from very far away, you get more points added. Um, with weapon master, which is an agility based skill, um, you can put points into proficiencies at 60, 100, 140, 80. Those, those are the caps. So at level 1, I couldn't raise higher than 60 at one point. Um, but if I added 2 points, I could add up to 100 points by using skill points by leveling up. Now, it's not capped as far as you um, just fighting and leveling up, but the higher you have in Weapon Master, if you have available slots, I guess you could call it that, the uh, quicker you can level up, potentially. So let's put, go ahead and put our points in. I'm going to put two into agility and two into charisma. Uh, that way I have a maximum amount of intelligence-based skills and charisma-based skills, which is what my main, my, mainly my character has. If you see over here, I've got agility, which is uh, writing, which is an agility-based skill, which everyone has. And most people have at least one point in that. Uh, looting is good because it gives me more stuff to sell. Uh, trainer is good. Uh, trainer, basically, uh, every night it adds a little bit of experience to all of my troops. So I'm going to want to max that out so I can get my troops leveling up quicker. Tracking is good, but it's a party skill. I'll probably give it to someone else. It just puts little tick marks on the ground whenever someone walks by. Tactics is a party skill too. I'm probably going to max that out. Um, uh, start Battle advantage is basically like whenever you have two groups of people fighting, if one has more troops or higher level troops, they'll have a, a better battle advantage. So if they have less tactics, it kind of evens out. But you can use a lower, uh, a smaller amount of troops with a higher amount of tactics, and essentially what battle advantage does is if uh, there's only a, I said it so there's only 150 people available in the battle. If say we both have 300 units, we're not going to be able to put 150 each. We'd only be able to have 75 each. But if I have a higher battle advantage because of my tactics or whatever, then I would be able to have more units on the field. So I could do something like 90 versus 60, which is really important especially whenever I set damage to normal. Pathfinding, uh, you just move faster on the, the map. I'm probably not going to put too many points into that. I'll probably put it on someone else. Inventory management gives you more slots, which is it's great. Okay, now these first aid things, I'm probably going to max those too. Wound treatment uh, increases the healing rate of your troops. Surgery prevents troops from dying. For every point, as a 4% chance that when someone's um, struck down that they're just unconscious so it saves your troops uh, first aid uh, heroes gain 5% per skill levels lost during a mission so basically at two points every time I end a, a battle I get 10% of my hit points back and all my uh, heroes do too so that's really good engineer is for thief construction probably gonna give that to someone else basically you can add like um, uh, like messaging posts and garrisons and prisoner areas and things to your the whatever you hold. I'm not I don't hold anything right now. I'm I'm sort of a noble, but not really. I don't have any right to rule, so I, I'm not going to capture anything right away. Um, but eventually, I'm probably going to give that to a party member because it is a really important skill later. Uh, persuasion. I honestly haven't really got this to work, um, or at least I haven't seen the effects right away because I usually play with a higher point of it. Basically, you can talk to someone and say, hey, uh, how you doing? And they're all like, I'm doing good. And then you're like, hey, you want to do this for me? And if you have a high persuasion skill, they have a better chance of accepting your offer if with a lower amount of um, relation with them. So if you do quests for someone, you have a high relation, they'll be more inclined to agree with you or whatever. Uh, prisoner management is good. Um, basically, if you, hit, if you hit knock people out with a blunt weapon, you can take them as a prisoner or if your troops knock them out with a blunt weapon and then um, you can sell them uh, like slaves and you get money for it and the higher level troops that you knock out the more money you get so it's it's pretty good I'm not gonna make it too high until later uh, leadership super important I'm gonna max it out right now um, it, uh, it increases the uh, base morale of your troops and the total number of troops you can have so definitely important uh, so let's go ahead and put some points in. Um, 
see I've got 10 points left. I want to max out surgery because I don't want my guys dying. These are okay right now. Um, probably going to raise tactics. Yep, i got 6 points left. I want to max out trainer because I want my guys to level up a little faster. Uh, they level up by just fighting and killing things, but it just helps. Oh, just a little bit. And then I've got two points left. Uh, let's see, is that intelligence based? I could do pathfinding. Because moving around and getting away from stuff in the early part of the game is pretty important. Um, that is also a party skill. I could just pass that off. I think what I'm going to go with is this guy's going to be kind of the first aid guy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do party healing because I'm not going to have any heroes right away. So this first aid would only help me and I'm going to try and stay out of battles. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to try and use crossbows and uh, one-handed weapons. Uh, pole arms, I mean I'm going to be mounted but it's not that big of a deal. I'll just kind of even it out and put one point in pole arms or whatever. Alright, now i got to name my character. I'm just going to do an expendable one. Actually, Sir Expendable One. Because, you know, I am a noble. Sort of. Kind of. Okay, now we can make our character. I usually just hit random a bunch of times and see what it looks good. Uh, but you can do all these sliders and <laughs> eyebrows. And, you know, change the way the guy looks. Man, uh, but I'm not going to fiddle with this. I'm not the kind of person who's like, man, i got to make my guy look like me. So I'm just going to hit random a little bit. Try to find someone I think looks kind of cool. Um, maybe change the hair around a little bit. This character is going to be more of a... Um, more of a raider at the beginning. Like, at the lower levels, I kind of want to go into other people's territory, raid their villages, get their stuff, and then sell it. That way, I, that my, my mercantile, you know, it's kind of useful. He looks kind of cool. I like the mustache. I'm digging it. Yeah, let's go with that. I think I'm old. No, young. Yeah, looks good. Now we have a choice of where we want to go. Sarleon is more of a night place. Ravenstern is sort of like a Nordic area, but their troops suck. Uh, the Shar Principalities, um, they have like mounted archer type people. Um, Ferdsvane, I believe, is more of a um, on foot troop with crossbows, and the Empire is like Roman stuff. I like the Empire because their starting troops have tower shields and spears. Um, let's go with that. Also, they have pretty okay archers. Now, this is the beginning thing, like basically you get attacked and you're just like, oh no, what do I do? Basic equipment, you've got a crossbow and a sword, and basic equipment is based off of um, what kind of skills you have. If I had a more of a, um, yeah, eh. If I had more of a um, two-weapon fighting, or not two-weapon, but two-handed fighting skills, I would get a two-handed weapon. If I was better with bows, I'd have a bow. You know, whatever. So this guy's like, hey, you kill that bandit. Are you alright? And I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. And he's just like, hey, uh, please help me. Um, my daughter got kidnapped by some cultists. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go help her. And he's just like, cool, you're awesome. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty awesome. So I hit tab to leave an area. This is the world map. Um, as you see, this is the empire. This is the Dishar Principalities, I believe. Uh, over here is Ferdsvein, uh, Sarleon, and the Ravenstern. Now, uh, the way the combat, the way, the way the map goes, is like everything is happening all at once. Like when if I just held down, it's pause right here. But if I held down spacebar, real time events would happen. I could also wait in places, and things would happen on its own. Basically, everyone's at peace right now. Uh, but as it goes, like uh, combat will happen, and then people start getting butt hurt, and then uh, wars will happen, and it's random. It's not like uh, Sarleon will always attack Ravenstern. But uh, and one time I played Sarleon, just took all over all of this, and I was just like, whoa. So then I ended up siding with Sarleon because they've got cool mounted troops, and I hate fighting mounted troops because they have lots of armor and they are fast and generally annoying to fight. So I start over here at Janos, and there's a training field right here. There's questing honor knights. Um, and the training field sort of like the tutorial area. Um, it just teaches you how to do the combat. Um, and you don't get any experience for doing it. So, Actually, I think you get one experience per fight, so it's kind of pointless. And with my not combat oriented character, it, it's pointless. So you can go to villages and towns, and at villages you can recruit volunteers. And this is where you're going to get most of your guys. 
Now for each person it costs 20 dinars, and so it's 500 dinars for all of them. You can also